Hey, what's up everyone? Mike the Manic Geek here, and today we're taking a look at the Scythe Kaze Flex 120 PWM. This is a 120 millimeter fan that is uh, more or less marketed as sort of a, a case and heat sink fan. Uh, but today we're gonna take a closer look at it and see if it can actually do all of that and then some. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and pop into first person view and take a closer look at this guy. First thing you're gonna to wanna to notice is it spins the opposite direction of a typical fan. Um, it's not actually a huge deal, it's just that most fans usually spin uh, counterclockwise like this, but this fan is set up to spin the opposite direction. So interesting choice that Scythe made there. Pretty reasonably sturdy frame. I mean, that's taking a considerable amount of effort for me to get this to really flex any. And for that amount of effort, with this being just installed in a PC, I seriously doubt you're gonna encounter durability issues there. We've also got these nice uh, gray rubber stoppers on each of the corners just to you know, make for a cleaner installation and sealing and make sure that there's no vibrations that get transferred into the case. We do have this really amply long uh, black braided cable uh, for, the, for the fan. I believe this is about 500 millimeters long. Probably the only issue that I have with it is the fact that the cabling itself uh, is this really bad combination of colors, which you can see up close right there. Um, it's not, it's, again, it's not really a deal breaker kind of thing. It's just an aesthetics thing, so take it for what it is. Now I should note that while in general this fan is pretty well built, there were a couple of uh, weird isolated instances that I occurred, uh, one of which being this tear in the rubber here. Now by the time I noticed it, the, the fan had been handled enough, I'm not really sure if it's shipped like that or if it's something that I created, uh, but either way, it's there. Um, it, I haven't encountered this on any of the other fans that I've had from them, so I would imagine this is sort of an isolated incident. Nom nom nom. We also have this black clip right here that uh, helps sort of keep the cabling that goes across the section of the frame organized. Uh, on one of my fans, this clip broke pretty much the second I started handling the cabling at all. Again, not actually a huge deal. This didn't happen with any of the other fans that I have. Uh, and really all that's gonna do is mean you have to be just slightly more mindful of how this cable lays down when you mount the fan. But if you're using this just in a case fan environment, shouldn't really be a problem. Now let's see how well she performs. All right, so we ran several different tests with the Kaze Flex 120 PWMs, uh, mostly centered around my Rosewill Cullinan case. Uh, so what I did here was I tested uh, all of my thermals with my Rosewill Cullinan in its stock configuration. Uh, I also then added two of the Kaze Flex 120s into the roof alongside the Rosewill fans running at 100%, with the Kaze Flex fans being the only variable. And then I went ahead and replaced the fans in my Cullinan with all Kaze Flex fans just to see how the entire thing would perform with completely different fans. If you want any information on the testing configuration used here, uh, look down in the video description, it's all listed there. But as we can see, looking at our half fan speed CPU stress testing, uh, the Cullinan stock fans really aren't up to the task of keeping a heavily overclocked CPU cool at their low fan speed, and we resulted in some kind of uncomfortably high temperatures, not only across the CPU core, but in separate data, we also saw VRM temperatures climbing to uncomfortably warm temperatures. Replacing all of the stock fans with Kaze Flex fans resulted in much better half-speed CPU load performance, with full fan-speed CPU loads being basically within margin of error here. The one interesting test result was when we added two Kaze Flex fans into the roof, running them at full speed seemed to increase the temperature of our CPU relative to what half fan speed performance was for these Kaze Flex fans. So that may have something to do with the fans spinning in opposite uh, direction of the other case fans and obscuring airflow, or maybe there's something else going on here. I'm not entirely certain, but it's definitely evident that if you're adding these into a case that already has existing fans in it, you're better off just running these at a really low fan speed unless you're matching all of the fans together. As far as the GPU stress testing was concerned, the card didn't really seem to care one way or another what the overall configuration was since everything was in margin of error with the exception of the Kaze Flex roof mounted test where the addition of the two fans alongside the Rosewill fans 
saw half fan speed GPU loads drop to essentially what the load temperatures were at full fan speed, which actually resulted in a significantly quieter operating system during GPU stress loads. Now I also did some additional testing with this fan to see how it would perform on both an air cooling heatsink and a radiator. Uh, so as we saw in the last video that we did as a roundup for scythe heat sinks, slapping another one of these on a Mugen 5 Revision B actually resulted in a 3 Celsius temperature improvement over what a single fan provided. So there are measurable and meaningfully good gains to be had by adding a second fan, the value of which is purely up to you. Throwing these on a radiator, however, did not yield very good performance results as we actually saw a 6C increase in temperature over the stock Corsair H100i fans. But it should be noted that this radiator has a really high FPI count, so you might be better served using these fans on a slim profile, low FPI count radiator to maximize their efficiency and minimize restrictions for air passing through the radiator. All right, let's wrap this sucker duck up. All right, so let's go ahead and summarize my thoughts on this really quick. It has really good build quality for the price. It's not super fancy, but I don't think it was trying to be. Anecdotally, it operates extremely quietly across all RP... It operates quietly across its entire RPM range and really functions well as a case fan or an air cooling heat sink fan. Radiators, you're gonna wanna stick with a slimmer profile, low FPI count radiator if you're gonna use this for that purpose, but even then, it's not terrible in that regard. It's just not gonna be meant for a really high performance water cooling setup. It's meant more for something where you just want things to be low profile and really quietly operating without adding a lot of bulk to your case. But hit me up in the comments below. What do you guys think about the Kaze Flex 120 here? Uh, would you guys consider using this in your next build? I mean, frankly, at a price point of anywhere from like 10 to 13 bucks for one of these fans, I kind of have a hard time justifying going for something else in that price point if this is what you're looking for. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Toss me a thumbs up on it if you like what you saw. Don't forget to subscribe for more content that I'll have up hopefully sooner rather than later. And as always, I'll catch you guys next time. Take it easy.